Previously, we explored React Server Components and learned about its dual component model that distinguishes between server and client components. Now, let's put that knowledge into practice by creating both types of components in an XJS application. For this second section of the course on rendering, I've created a fresh Next.js project using the command npx create next app at latest rendering hyphen demo. Once you run this command, you'll have a similar project structure to work with. Looking at how the RSC architecture integrates with Next.js, there is a key point to remember. Every component in a Next.js application defaults to being a server component. This includes the built-in root layout and root page that come with every new Next.js project. But let's create a new component to verify this. We will add an about page to our app by creating a new folder within the app folder. About with a page.tsx file. Here, define a simple React component. Export default function about page that returns an h1 about page. And just like that, we have created a server component. To prove this, let's add console.log about server component. In the browser, when we navigate to slash about, notice how it is locked with a special server tag. We can also see the same message in the terminal. This confirms our component is a server component. Running components on the server brings several advantages. Zero bundle size, direct access to server-side resources, improved security, and better SEO. However, server components do have limitations. They can't interact with the browser APIs or handle user interaction. For example, if we try to use state in our about page with the use state hook from React, so import use state from React and invoke the hook, let's call it name and set name, we will get an error because use state requires a client component environment. Currently, our about page is a server component. Server components can't maintain state because they run on the server where browser-based state management doesn't exist. This reinforces the fact that Next.js treats every component as a server component by default, unless explicitly specified otherwise. Let's leave the about page as a functioning server component by removing the use state hook and learn how to create a new client component. We will create a dashboard slash page.tsx in the app folder that uses state to manage a user's name. So export default function dashboard page. We import and invoke use state, name and set name. For the JSX, we have a div tag with an h1 dashboard, an input element with value set to the name state variable. And on change, we call set name, which is our setter function. We then have a paragraph, hello, followed by the name state variable. To convert this server component into a client component, at the top of the file, we must include a directive, or to put it simply, a special instruction within the code. Use client within quotes. This directive acts as our ticket to cross the boundary from server to client side and is what allows us to define client components. It signals to Next.js that this dashboard component, along with any components it imports, is intended for client side execution. As a result, the component gains full access to browser APIs and the ability to handle interactivity. To navigate to this route, let's add a link in our home page. So in the root page.tsx, below the image link, the text is dashboard, href is equal to slash dashboard, and make sure to import the link component at the top. Import link from next slash link. If we return to the browser and navigate to slash dashboard by clicking the link, we see the component with its state functioning as expected. Hello, Vishwas. Let's now look at a very important point about client components rendering behavior. Let's add console.log dashboard client component to our dashboard page component. Back in the browser, when we click the dashboard link from the home page, the log appears in the browser console, but without the server tag. If we take a look at the terminal, we don't see the message. But if we reload the dashboard page, the dashboard appears both in the browser and in the terminal. Let me explain why this happens. 
When we navigate using the link component, the dashboard component is only rendered client side and we see the message in the browser console. But if we reload the page, the dashboard component is rendered once on the server to allow the user to immediately see the page's HTML content rather than a blank screen and then again on the client side during hydration. This is why we see the message in the browser console and the terminal. The term client component is indeed confusing, but you'll get used to this behavior as you work with RSCs. On a side note, the message in the browser is logged twice in the browser because of the strict mode during development. This doesn't happen in production, so don't worry about it. To summarize, in the RSC architecture, and by extension in the Next.js app router, components are server components by default. To create client components, add the use client directive at the top of the file. Server components are rendered exclusively on the server, while client components are rendered once on the server and then on the client. All right, up next, we will explore the rendering lifecycle of server and client components in Next.js. Supporting the channel is free. Please like and subscribe. It helps a lot.